Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so what I deal with. we are going to talk about related rates. What's a related rate? Awesomeness. That's the only way you can define it. It does? Sure. Yeah. What's a derivative? <laughs> Just okay. let me know. He's been waiting for that since first period. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, I've taught you derivatives so well that you can't actually mean that. <laughs> it must be it. Do we have uh, packets? Yeah. What can you hear stuff? Yeah, they're just mine. <laughs> they're just mine right now. Wait, oh. I need a packet. No, they're, they're, they're just mine. What? Here's the packet. I now showed it to you. Thank yeah. you. I won't look ahead. <laughs> All right. We'll see. Okay. He's lying. He looked ahead yesterday. I could I hear. Know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So air is being pumped into spher spherical balloons so that its volume increases at a rate of 100 cubic centimeters per second. Cool. How fast is the radius balloon increasing when the diameter is 50 centimeters? First question. Should this be a solvable problem? Yes. 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 When I ask if it's a solvable problem, I mean like if I gave it to one person and another person, theoretically, if they did it right, would they get the same answer, or are they going to get varying answers? Basically. No. They should get the same answer. They should get the same answer. Okay. Now, before, I don't think you could have done this. I'm really tempted to say half a second, but I'm pretty sure that's wrong. <laughs> how fast is the radius increasing? So. <laughs> oh, it's how fast and how long it takes. I think there's some buttons on here that allows me to have like circles and stuff. I don't know where it is. So I'll just draw my balloon. It's a okay. nice circle. And I will input into the balloon 100 cubic centimeters per second. So the radius is definitely going to be increasing. You know how the radius are. So the trick with these problems, which are word problems, which you will then have a feeling like you're doing a whole bunch of physics, but there's calculus involved. Because, uh, and likewise with my other physics people that I talk to, um, it'll feel like you're doing a whole bunch of uh, physics. Physics. Yeah. Uh, section. Can, the, the, yeah. Uh, can you just teach us? Can you teach us um, calculus in terms of physics? He is. I am. Yeah. Yes. Can you start with you know yeah. the. The matter. equation that equates radius to volume? Yes, we are definitely going to be involving that guy. That's a good thing. So when I get these things, I get these numbers here. And by the way, they're saying when the radius is 50 centimeters. Why is that important? It's one of the diameters 50 centimeters. Uh, so we'll change that to 25 centimeters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when R is 25 centimeters. Why do you think that's important to this problem? It's going to be a cubic function, and so the slope is going to be different at different points. True, but yeah. we're not going to be looking at the, the graph, actually, of, of the slope at all. You won't be able to make it at all. Um, you'll be able to do something to it, and then you can make the graph if you want. But in answer to my question, yes? Um, we're going to need derivatives, which is finding the change or the slope or whatever at a certain point, and that's the point we have, is when it's currently at 25 centimeters, what is the rate it's going to change for like the next point, zero, 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 whatever centimeters, but it's, what's the rate, what is the rate of change of the radius at 25 centimeters? Let's see if we can phrase it without calculus at all. You should be able to intuit this sort of answer here. Why does it matter at 25 centimeters? Why is that going to impact how fast the radius is going to Because the bigger it gets, the slower the radius is expanding. Correct. The bigger it gets, the slower the radius is going to be expanding. Yeah, the more volume you have to add. Okay. Yeah. Does that make sense? So the rate of change of the radius is changing as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. The rate of change of the radius is changing. Uh, so that's kind of like an acceleration almost, or deceleration in this case. Um, so. Let's try this. So you said, let's start out with a formula that we know that has to do with a sphere. Okay. Did they say spherical? They did. So we can definitely assume it's a sphere. Even if they didn't say it was a sphere, we can still do it. 
Um, anyone remember what it is for sphere? Yeah. Four thirds pi, four pi r over three. three. No. Four thirds pi r oh, cubed. Five, four pi. Four, four thirds pi, pi r cubed radius, all over three. So. Four thirds pi r cubed. Four thirds pi r cubed. Four thirds. Pi r it's the same oh. as you said, except r is cubed. And just as a little check, why would the radius be cubed? The four thirds and the pi, yeah, I can understand why you you're working in three dimensions. Because you're working in three dimensions. We're talking about volume, which is a cubic is a cubic dimension. So it's mm -hmm. cubed. So and radius, which is a linear dimension. So we're going to have to keep in order for the units in order for the units to even work out. Okay, which is why, like it, in a conic section. Uh, take uh, the volume of a cone, I'm um, getting a little off topic, but the volume of a cone is, uh, is one-third pi r squared times h. It's r squared times h. You get that cubic thing, that function. So you should be able to check your units to see any time. Okay, good. Now, the unfortunate thing about this formula is it has nothing to do with rates. Derivative. Derivative. Okay, derivative with respect to what? R. R, no. Why wouldn't you use the derivative of volume in respect to radius? Let me ask you a question. So I didn't quite get to this. Usually when we get these numbers, we want to put them into our picture. Picture is a good idea. You also want to declare what these variables are. So let's declare this variable. Okay. Now we could pick a regular variable like x or y or something like that. But I claim that we should pick something else, something that describes a rate, because that 100 cubic meters or cubic centimeters per second is a rate. So I'm not going to label it with a regular variable like x or y. I'm going to call it something like with that deals with rates, like a derivative of some sort. Yeah. I'm thinking it's dvdt. Uh -huh. That would be an excellent one for it. Do you want to understand why I would call it dvdt? Mm -hmm. It's the change in volume over the change in time. And what are they asking me for? So that's the other part of it. I've labeled my, all my variables. I've got my r. I've labeled it there for radius. And I've got dvdt. Um, the other aspect is I need to create a variable of what I'm looking for. drdt. Yeah, I'm looking for drdt. Now, that should help you figure out what I'm going to take the derivative with respect to. Well, because I'm looking for dr dt, the, the rate of change of the radius with respect to time. Not with respect to anything else, with respect to time. Okay. So, and I'll, all I've got right now is this one. This one here. Yeah, so I'm thinking that uh, you're going to have to plug in um, r for 50 into the volume, then solve for time. I mean r25. Yeah, mm -hmm. r 25 Oh, you changed it. Okay. Uh, into the rate, solve for time, and then. Uh, but I don't. How have, are you solving for time? I don't have time anymore. Yeah. This is the weird part. Yeah. Okay, so, so the part that you This is do. Wait, uh, I have an idea. Okay, I have an idea. Did you look ahead? No. Okay. Uh, I'm thinking we're going to do this equation. And then we're adding a hundred per second, right? Hundred cubic centimeters per second. So that would be somehow added to the volume. It is added to the volume. Yes. Can I say something really weird that I've been thinking of this whole time? Sure. It's the derivative of r with respect to v. What about it? That's what we need. That is what we need. We are looking for the derivative of r with respect to t. V. V? With respect to V. Mm. Now, because we're looking for this. We don't care about the change in radius as compared to the change in velocity. I know, but volume. 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 The reason why I'm saying dV with respect to V is V is what we have right now. We have no T, so we have taking something with the respect to T is kind of useless. I know that's what we're looking for in the end, but we is, can't start there. I'm going to try and blow your mind here. This is the part where, like, after you get it, you'll be like, oh, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> it makes Are sense. Are we looking for... D T D V. Yeah, not D T D V. We want something. We want to take the derivative with respect to time mm -hmm. in order to get D R D T. I have.
have an equation, it doesn't have time in it. Does the volume change as time goes on? Yes. Is there some function in out there that we don't know about that tells us how volume changes as a function of time? Yes. We just don't know it. Is there something that tells us how radius changes as time goes on? Yes, we just don't know it. We know that radius is going to change as time goes on. We don't have an equation. Here's my plan. Uh, so I'm going to take this equation right here. I'm going to take the derivative of it with respect to time. Because v and r are functions of time. Oh, and then since you know that 100 centimeters cubed per second is dv dt, you can plug that in. Yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. functions with respect to time. Let me time. show the rest of you guys. So, I'm going to take the derivative of both sides here with respect to t. What's um, the derivative of v with respect to t? dv dt. It is just dv dt. If you're doing implicit variation, I'm going to get really angry. I am. We are. Okay. It's chain rule. Now, four thirds and pi, those are constants. I'm going to take the derivative of r cubed. I'm just going to pull those constants out temporarily and do the derivative of this uh, r cubed with respect to time. So that's a function within a function. Mm -hmm. Function exception. It's finally on the internet! It's not function exception, it's fun. You're using too okay. much syllables. Thank you. So, do you guys all see that it's a function within a function? R is a function. We just happen to not know what the function R is with respect to time. So we can still take the derivative of it. So I'll bring that 3 down and make it a 2 times the derivative of the inside. What's the derivative of the inside? R prime. T. Dr dt. Dr dt. You don't use R prime in this stuff. Why? Because it's we really need to know what we're taking. Um, so bringing the 3 down, that's 4 thirds times 3. What's that? 4 pi r squared. 4 thirds times 3 is what? 4. 4. So 4 pi r squared times what? The derivative of the inside of that function here is dr dt. Okay. Now I've got what? an equation. <laughs> she knows what she's got. Rachel, look with me. I was not. She actually did not work. She's bumping the table. Okay. Oh. So now I've got an equation. It's not with respect to t, but look at what I have. And I don't have do I have dv dt? Yep. Yep. I know what 4 is. I know what pi is. Do I know what r is? Yes. yes. What is it? 25. 25. And all I have to do now is solve for that. Yep. That's it. Now I feel silly. It was weird, but you'll get it now. We should have just done it with physics. Um, so dividing that stuff, so I get. Aren't we doing it with physics? I think we're doing it with calculus. Same DT. thing. No, it's really oh, not. Well, Jacob, did. four pi r squared. Jacob, go ahead and look ahead and tell me what the answer is. Yay! Hey, I was gonna use my calculator to do it. Okay, go ahead. Never mind. No, Jacob, no, stop! No, I got. I Close got the page. Got Close, this. Close the page. Point oh one. Point oh one two seven three two three nine five four. I like your answer better. I do actually. Okay, can you say it again? Point zero one two seven three two three nine five four. That's too much. Point zero. <laughs> point zero one two seven three two. Five. That'll be. No! Three, two, three, five. There's no fives in it! There's a five in there! The only gone. difference between what I said and what she said was a three. More accurate. There's more. I was impressed that she got it done with the calculator and all you did was look ahead. <laughs> you told me to look ahead! <laughs> what are the units for this, please? Oh, did you? Um, they are in centimeters per, centimeters second. per second. Centimeters per second. Now, your units work out to whatever you, you're starting on. So it's nice and easy. But there we go. That's how fast it's going to be increasing. Not a lot. Not a lot. Um, you can see why now, using this equation here, this one that we came up with, um, why as the radius increases, the rate of the radius decreases? Because you need to increase the volume more to increase the radius. You can think of it like. Use the equation. The equations. Okay. Well, I was gonna. We're, ver we're verifying what we thought was true with the equation. Because the equation for the volume with respect to time is over the radius. It's over the radius. 
this dvdt is a constant, right? Mm -hmm. it's because it's a centimeter. So you have the constant over a variable that's getting bigger. We have the constant over a variable that's getting bigger, and it's getting bigger with the square. So the it's rate getting of, really bigger. Yeah. So the rate of change is definitely going to be decreasing as time goes on. Cool. Not much bigger. Not bigger faster. Just really bigger. Bigliest. Yeah. You just. All right. Let's continue on. So that was all that jazz. Stop looking at I'm not. I'm turning the page. That's called looking at it. Jason told you to turn the page, Abby. Um, Wait a moment. Page. I that said pro logic. logic. What? It's supposed to work. You're still on the same page. It's not. Hmm? Example three. Two. Whatever. If it's on the next All right, page. Let's try this one. It'll be easier. No. 271 and 1390 at the top. That's not accurate. Look, I'm on 242. No, the that, the page that says the top includes all the You're pages lying. That, oh, that don't have Sorry. that don't have numbers. <laughs> pages okay. Numbers, but it's still Not okay. actually in this. A ladder ten feet long rests against a vertical wall. If the bottom of the ladder slides away from the wall, wall at a rate of one foot per second, how fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall when the bottom of the ladder is six feet from the wall? Let's draw a picture. So essentially you're asking how how long do you have to get screwed and stuck on top of the wall? Okay. I have a ladder. Okay. It's ten foot long. Okay. It's sliding down. The bottom of the ladder slides at a rate of one foot per second. So right down here, the bottom of the ladder is going at one foot. How fast is the top of the ladder sliding? So the top of the ladder here. How fast is it going down? When the bottom of the ladder is six feet from the wall. So it's six feet here. Here, let me rearrange this stuff. Right click. You can do it. How does it know when to Oh, you missed the second. <laughs> you missed the second? Yeah, you missed Aww. the S. <laughs> Foot seconds divided by nothing. <laughs> I'll group you. Didn't deserve to be grouped. Grouped. Fixed. Okay, yeah, those foot seconds are really pushing me up. Alright, so I'll shrink this down a little bit. Okay. So now I've got this guy. 10 feet, 6 feet, 1 foot per second. Um, what's the first thing I should do in these type of problems? Laugh and cry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sob deeply. Mm -hmm. Label You're stuff. Out. What's that? Label stuff you don't know. Label stuff I don't know. Okay, so what am I going to call this 6 feet? X. X, okay. Um, what am I going to call this 10 feet? H. 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 Z. Z. It's a hypotenuse. Aww. Z. Probably a poor choice on my part because it looks like a 2. So H wins. Yay! Aww. Victory is mine. H. Okay. Um, what's 1 foot per second? Velocity. It is a velocity. Yo, it's probably a derivative of. Yeah. So, it is a derivative, so and I want to label it as such. Yeah, I so labeled this x. Um, so it's dx, dx over dt. dt. Yeah. So I should probably label this dx dt. That's another trick for this stuff. You don't want to make up a new variable with one. 
And then the other one's D H D T. Well, not H. No. Someone kicked the table. I won't say who. Wasn't me. I did not. Her, her initials are Rachel Caden. Those aren't the initials. Initials, Jacob? Yep, her initials are Rachel Caden. Okay, we have that on yeah. video proof now. I'm good. So, all right, now we've got one more thing. What are we looking for? What's the variable we're looking for? Uh, we need to make one. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? No. We're looking to because see how fast something. the ladder goes down. That's a rate of change, okay. so it's going to be in a form of a derivative. dy dt. Good. We are looking for dy dt. Now I've labeled everything, drawn my picture. Next step. Probably need some sort of equation that relates all this stuff. It doesn't have to be in the terms of time, which is nice. It's from algebra 1. I know what y is. What shift do you see? Pythagorean. You see a triangle. You see a triangle. X squared plus y squared equals h squared. Wait, 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 wait. I see a white triangle. Yeah. I see a hexagon. I don't know what you guys are talking about. So in this case, I changed the formula to x squared plus y squared equals h squared. Now, what's y? I didn't label y on here. Y is h feet. No. Y is h feet. Yeah. Okay. Where'd you get 8 from? 3, 4, 5 triangle. Four five triangles, so this has to be AP. Actually, no, but it doesn't have to be AP. We're assuming that the wall is straight. If we do that, a vertical wall it says vertical. Vertical okay. seems straight. Fine. It's okay. So AP. I'd rather say that be wrong and be right. That's fine. Wrong. Yeah. But that's why now. AP is our Y. Yeah. Even though we didn't have it labeled as such. All right. Now, I'm looking now. for DYDT. Now we take the, the derivative derivative with respect to No, wait. Now you take the square root of both sides. No, don't take square root. Wait, that wouldn't work. Take the derivative of both sides. Take the derivative yeah. with respect to what? Everything with respect to t. Even though there's no t in this equation. Because you want to find a dy dt, and you'll get that by taking the derivative. So what's the derivative of x with respect to t? Or x squared. 2x times dx dt. dx dt plus 2y times dy dt. Not just equals 2 8 times 2 8 times dhdt. Eh, it's just equal to divide both sides by 2. It's equal to 1 or is equal to 0? What's dhdt? Nada. Yeah. Wow. No, it would have what do you yeah. mean by nada? I mean, it doesn't change. There's no change. Yeah. So what is it? dh is 0. It's just 0. Zero because uh, no, it's one. No, it's zero. D H is like literally the difference in H. The difference of the height of the ladder was not the height. Oh. The, the, the length, the length of the ladder, the ladder or the hypotenuse of this triangle with respect to time. It's so ten minus ten over two time periods is zero. Oh, so okay. it's going to be zero oh, over 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 how long it's been. Okay, so it'll be two times ten times zero. So nothing. I'm pretty sure that's 20. <laughs> you forgot it was zero. 200. <laughs> um, so 2 times x, that's 2 times, what was x? 6 feet. 6 feet times dx dt. 1 foot per second. 1 foot per second. Plus 2 times y, we figured out was 8. So that's dy dt. We're trying oh, to that's what I'm trying to find. Equal to zero. Oh, so that is algebra. I do get that the answer is 12 over 12 16. 12 3 fourths. 3 fourths. No. Which is still 12 over 16. No, yeah. negative 3 fourths. Negative 3 fourths. 3 fourths. Feet per second. Or the more proper answer I like in this one because this is a physical application of something we like decimals in this case. Okay. Which is 0.75 feet per second. Shouldn't we drop a negative? Don't significant figures say that no, there's only moving both down. one decimal? Yeah. Why did I get a negative why did I get a negative answer here? Because it's moving downwards. It's moving downwards. Well the, the reason why is decreasing as x increases. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that make sense? 
the reason why I'm saying remove the negative is what we're finding is how fast the top of the ladder is sliding down. So it's already implied that it's going down. So it's going down at 0 0.75 feet per second, not at negative. Yeah. I probably wouldn't mark you down if you wrote all that. Mm -hmm. But if you wrote negative 0.75. What if you okay just wrote 0.75? Then I'd be like, no, it's not increasing. But it asks how fast is the top of the ladder sliding down. I'm just, down like I'm, just saying, I'm just saying, you're going to have to make the argument to me later. If you, I'm a reasonable person. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you take a strict reading of the problem. It's true. Thank and you. you have to make that argument, that's all. Sure. And, I probably, and what would I probably say? Okay. Fine. Okay, okay. Full, okay. Points. full points. Yeah. It's all about uh, framework argument. Yeah. How do you know we're not In just BSing case, later on? Falling. Uh, I can kind of tell sometimes. Especially when you're like, Jake, I can't wait till you're in physics. Because there's one section that's all about frames of reference. Which clearly I already have a all decent understanding of. We're back to calculus. Thank you. Alright, so let's continue. Let's find another problem. Yeah. Yes! Oh, so <laughs> they of them all! No! <laughs> no! Go to extinction! No! Oh, wait, what? It's actually not a conic section, it's just a conic. Yeah. Conic section, you have to tilt the slice at an angle. No, conic section is a two dimensional object. That's a cone. Fine, that works too. You don't have to tilt it. See, it can the be great thing is, I don't need to make silly comments for the internet when you guys are here. <laughs> so you're you were here you. yesterday, so I just needed to make all the comments myself. Now you're here. I'm actually all making right. it. Actually, sure. You're just trying to I'm ready for you. Are you? Okay. This one's a little more difficult. You definitely want to pay attention. So, water tank has the shape of an inverted cylindrical cone, so that would be... Not circular cylindrical. Cone. Circular cone, because I can't read that. I apologize. I teach calculus. How would you have a cylindrical cone? Shh. <laughs> Don't judge me. It's kind of an oxymoron. Don't rod. judge me. <laughs> <laughs> With a base radius of two meters, so I'm drawing my picture as you should. Like we should right now, or we should in general? And a height of four meters. That is a very big ice cream. Cone. <laughs> water is being pumped into the tank at a rate of. So I will pump water in. At a rate of two meters cubed per minute. Isn't that two meters? Find no meters. And Find the rate at which water level is rising when it's three meters deep. So, three meters. Can I start this out with kind of a silly question of who the hell makes an inverted circular cone tank? Maybe that's the space they I've had to fit it in. What space would someone put a fish tank Wait. in? Wait! You asked a question. These exist. Inverted cylindrical cones. I've seen them. As a water tank, though? As a water tank? That's what I'm saying, is who would make like a, a water tank in an inverted cylindrical cone? But it doesn't matter. Damn, I'd say it, it, doesn't matter. it doesn't matter if it's a water tank or not. I mean, I've seen these and they hold liquid, so yeah. whether it's a water tank or it's not a water tank, the problem's still there. True. I'm just saying it's silly. And I'm starting to be cylindrical now, which makes me sad. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what's the next thing I need to do? Derivatives. We'll label derivatives. Label everything. Label everything. Okay, so let's start off with this one. This one's probably easy. Uh, R. R, okay. Um, I'm going to call this, yeah, I'll call it R. Yeah. And what are we going to call this guy? H. 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 Mm. What am I going to call three? H, H prime. H sub two. Mm. H prime, we shouldn't do this. So that's, oh. that's applied derivative. I need to kind of switch this up a little bit. Let's, let's not call this H. H, H sub one? H sub two? Yeah, let's, because uh, those don't change, do they? No. Let's call it capital R. Capital H. Uh, Why? Oh. Why would that be a good notation? For because me? then you know that the bigger one has capital letters. Because capital letters are always bigger. No. <laughs> yes. I don't think. Sometimes. What you That's said what is. In this equation. What you said is true. What I'm job, thinking. But no. What I'm thinking is that these are constants, so I'm going to make them capitalized to really emphasize the fact that they're constant. Okay. Um, this guy, what do I call that one? Suddenly a red H? 
Lowercase h. Lowercase h. That's suddenly red. Okay, and what's this? What's two cubic meters per minute? Uh, derivative of volume. Lowercase h relative volume to time. Volume in my life. I'm sorry. I said fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we have so dvdt. We can check later. dvdt is the rate of change of the volume. Isn't that the rate of change of the volume with respect to time? So we need an equation that relates v to lowercase h. And uh, what are we looking for? The rate that lowercase h is changing when the water level is three meters deep. Yeah, uh, find the rate at which the water level is rising. So we want to know d little h. Cool. Let's do it. I want to look ahead. This one's a difficult one, so I need you to think about it. So, what's the formula in half? Uh, one third. What pi r squared? What b equal? equals one third pi r squared? B equals one third pi. R squared, and it's not working out so far. Capital R squared if you really want to. And it's not working H. out. Times H. And oh, that's what you meant. Now that you oh, work out. Sorry. We have R squared, that's square meters, or square whatever. Square meters, we're going to be doing in meters. Square meters times meters, so that's cubic meters, so the units work out. This Wait, is one what's the little r in, what's that? What's Shouldn't that be r? big R? Yeah, but, okay. So that's, that's a good formula. question. This is the formula for volume of a cylindrical cone. If I use big R and big H, that's the exact volume of this entire cone, mm -hmm. right? If I use little r and little h, I'm kind of taking the volume of a, a cone of water that's there right then. A cone of water that's changing, and we do have a cone of water that's changing, right? It's the actual volume inside here that's changing. So, now what? Now we need to... Take the derivative of everything? No. With respect to what? T. Time. Does okay. Help us? Well, what's the problem with that? We don't know anything about little r or little h, so we would have to... We're going to get a dr dh, and we're going to get a dh dt. Sorry, a dr dt when we take the derivative of this, and we're going to get a dh dt when we get the derivative of this. Now, dh dt is good, because that's what we're looking for. Yep. dr dt is bad, because we don't know what it is. It's easy to find out, though. How? It's how the radius decreases as you go down the cone. Mm -hmm. How does it change? We know how the volume changes. No, it does. It well, no, it does change. He says how. Yeah, how does it change? It I don't know what dr dt is. I, if I take the derivative of, of this with respect to time, I'm going to get a dr dt. I don't have dr dt in my volume see that? So we can try to figure out the radius in terms of the volume. Or radius in terms of h would mm -hmm. actually be better. Okay. Either one would work. Either one would work. Um, dvdt, do we have that? Yep. Okay. So I really want to try to get rid of that r. So here's how I'm going to do it. Undo. What was this? R. R. How much? Two meters. Two. Um, what's that? Four meters. Four. Okay. There's a section of it. Let's do it blue for the water. Oh, it might have been me. What? <laughs> I'm taking the blame. Why are you mad at me? I'm seriously not mad at you. Right. Back on. Back on. Okay. <laughs> so this little section right here was how much? We're interested in it when it was three. Three. Mm -hmm. what? Right. Meters. Or it was some some particular depth that we sure. called it age, right? Which was three. 
Um, there's a ratio. Do you guys see this triangle that's in here? Yep. Oh, it's a triangle. Yep. So this triangle and here. This triangle. So many colors. Right here. Okay. Too many colors. Not enough colors. Oh. I can't do Someone said it all right. How do those triangles compare? They're similar. They're similar triangles, so we can set up a ratio, which is really nice. Um, I can call this right here R. You could say R is to H as what? Capital R is to capital H, or 2 is to 4. 2 is to 4. Shouldn't you be using colons instead of lines and equal sign? No. I mean, you can use colons, but, but they are they translate into equal sign. That's from general. The ratio of R to H is the same as the ratio from 2 to 4. Or if you wanted, you could set R is to 2. Wait. R divided by 2 is the same thing as H divided by 4. Or you could have said 4 divided by H. I think what I'm remembering is it's not equal sign. It's like an equal and an about sign in the same place. That's not true. Because uh, H is a hypotenuse and 4 is a length. H is not a hypotenuse. H is the length right here. Oh, okay. I, I just missed what I was doing. Yeah. Okay. Now I've got a nice little formula. I say R is equal to one half H. Correct? Yep. Why is that useful? Yeah, I'm loading the back Okay, that's our. You couldn't just rewrite it? It is. No. I'm practicing. So we can just replace R in the equation of one half H. Then so we take the derivative of everything in H terms of T. Cubed. Well, no, H squared. No, H cubed. No, you guys yeah. are changing too fast. So it's one half squared, yeah. so that's going to be one fourth times H squared times H. So the volume, lower something up here, the volume is equal to <laughs> one third. <laughs> <laughs> you were just like h cubed pi over one twelfth pi h cubed. Yep. Good. Yep. What can I do with that? Copy paste it. <laughs> now in the math. Take the derivative of everything in terms of t. Yes. So dv dt equals bring that three down. So that's uh, I H H squared times what? Oh yeah, um times D H D T. And we know D V D T. And we're looking for D H D T. We know D V D T. We know H. We're gold. It's just algebra at that point. What do we get? D H D T. Rachel, go ahead and Times pi, what's times 3 squared, divided by 2, I got 2 3 thirds point divided by 5. 5, 5 3. Say again? I got 3.53, which doesn't sound right. I got, I got 2 thirds divided by 5. So you got a positive number. 1 fourth times pi yeah, times H work, is so. 3. So three point what? Three point five three. Three point five three. No, it's gonna be a decimal. Units are gonna be. How are you guys? Centimeters or no meters? Meters per second. I see something that's wrong. Since so just ignoring pi for a second, you have you had nine. You have one fourth times nine times pi times what we're solving for equals two. So you're going to have a minimum of nine fourths, which is two point. Two oh, point, you're right. I should yeah, take the inverse 25, of that. Two divided by two point two five. Hang on. Where's the inverse button? <laughs> so I got point two eight two nine. I didn't like that color. I didn't either. 
Sometimes you say it's easy, sometimes you don't. 2829. Two, eight, nine. And I can prove it. 2829. Two, Damn it! <laughs> 2829. <laughs> Two, eight. Two. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> For a second. Are you okay? No, I'm fine. It's just a mute. Having a good time. Okay, there's our answer. Then I think you should label these um, like as a mini series on having fun happy looking back, episode one, episode two, episode three. Yeah, right now it's just eleven space slash space nineteen. Yeah, I was I was really like sad because that was just the most uncreative title. You guys ever. can come and hang out with me and we'll name it together. <laughs> no, I would just amuse you put so many spaces in. Okay. So two point eight three. Meters per second. Pretty cool. Do you see how this is a different form of problem solving than you've done before? Yep. Yeah, it's much more based on derivatives. No, I had you for physics. No, it should seem different. Because now you know what derivative is. And am I out of time? That's no, it. I got ten minutes. Cool. Continue. No. He no. should. <laughs> what Jacob should know and what Jacob does know. Are two totally different. <laughs> okay. Well, why are we bagging on me all of a sudden? <laughs> it's not all of a sudden, Jacob. <laughs> oh, <laughs> snap. John, shut up. <laughs> no. Good job, John. So they give you a nice little strategy in your book. I don't use it. <laughs> but you tell us to use it. No, you can use it if you want. It's essentially what we're doing. It is. Draw, so label. Read the problem carefully. Cool. Draw a diagram. Introduce notation. Label. Sign symbols for all the quantities that are functions of time. So they're asking you to do the derivatives. Well, okay. that's kind of, if you're trying to make this an overall strategy, that's a bad way to put it, since not everything's going to be relative to time. Yeah. Um, express the given information and the required rate in terms of derivatives. Write an equation that relates the various quantities of the problem. If necessary, use geometry of the situation to eliminate one of the variables by substitution. We did this one just now, right? We did a similar triangle. Uh, use chain rule to differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to t, and substitute the given information into the resulting equation and solve for the unknown. Yep. That's everything we just did. Yep. Yeah! I guess I do do this. Yeah, you do. It's just, it's written <laughs> I don't better. think about it. <laughs> it's, read the pro it's read the problem, draw, label, lab make sure you label with what you're looking for in terms of derivatives, eliminate something, Chain rule, solve. Yes. Oh, and give the right uh, units. Yeah, units are <laughs> Give the right units, eight. <laughs> That's kind okay. of just like putting eight, don't mess up. So. What about nine significant figures? Do you have to use significant figures in this class, Dylan? No. Okay, good. Good. I hated it. Same. Why? I like significant figures. You get to not worry except, about 50 gazillion decimals. Except here's the thing. Like, we were in chemistry this morning. Chris is posting.